Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today we'll, we will be doing a tabletop comparison and review of the new ATI or GSG MP40 pistol versus an original World War II CNR transferable MP40 machine gun. This is an original MP40 from World War II. It is totally functional. Uh, we do have other videos of us shooting this uh, machine gun, so go check those out if you're interested. This is, of course, the new ATI GSG uh, MP40. It is 9mm, the original caliber, but it is semi-automatic only, and it does not, of course, have a stock, which we will get into, uh, to basically allow it to have the original barrel length uh, without having some sort of fake suppressor or anything on there. We'll go ahead and we'll do, uh, we'll start with an unboxing of the ATI so you can see what it comes with. Obviously, we will not be doing a, a, an unboxing of the original, as I do not have the original factory uh, shipping boxes or material from World War II, which is pretty normal. But at least you can see what the ATI will come with. And then we'll do a, a pretty much a comparison. The focus will be, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, the ATI, to see how closely it does resemble an original MP40. So we'll start with that now. All right, we're gonna start with the unboxing of the ATI MP40. It comes in a standard cardboard box. We'll go ahead and open up. Here we do have this panel here we will remove. Right underneath we will find the MP40. We'll check that it is clear, and it is. Right here we do have one 32 round magazine. We'll move this panel out of the way. We have instruction information, uh, disassembly tools a gun safety lock, and that is it. All right, getting into the general specifications, I removed both magazines from these so you can kind of see them side by side. It is a pretty good and pretty close representation. Starting with the overall feel and weight, the original one does weigh in at about 8.75 pounds. I don't have a scale, but just by lifting it, I can say they're very, very close. The original MP40 just a little bit heavier, and I can probably attribute that to the stock. Now, of course, this does have a folding stock on it, as an original MP40 would, which does collapse out, which this does not. If this were to have a stock, it would be considered an SBR. I do not see. There are two uh, discs here, which can probably be removed, uh, and you could probably figure out a way to attach your own stock and SBR this. Now you can get an MP40, an original MP40 parts kit if you want to spend the money and see if you can use the original stock on here. Uh, of course, you'd really need to know what you're doing to do that. But, um, but anyway, that would probably attribute to that extra weight. I'm going to take a couple measurements. Now, I've never actually done this before. Pulling this out of the box, this, we're kind of doing this together for the first time. So an original MP40 measures in at 24 and a quarter inches. Uh, from the back to the muzzle and if I go down here to the same 24 and a quarter inches So it's exactly the same length, which is pretty cool now measuring up here at the barrel I'm now instead of measuring the entire barrel length. I'll stop right here at the back of the barrel nut So if I start here and measure again, I'm at eight and a quarter inches coming down here to the ATI again eight and a quarter inches, so Or pretty much the same weight pretty much the same length pretty much the same barrel length so that's pretty interesting. We can go ahead and do height. So I'll go to the bottom of the pistol grip on a real one, eyeballing it. We're at about seven and three quarters. Doing this again, about yep seven, about seven and a half. So maybe just a little bit. Well, it's yeah, about seven and a half inches. So maybe just a quarter of an inch shorter. So, but pretty much theoretically the same. And I was just eyeballing that. Now, I know I'm going to get this question, magazines, here I have an original MP40 magazine in this hand, and this is the ATI magazine. Uh, just by looking at them, they look very similar, and I will bring those in. Again, MP40, original MP40, ATI mag. So very similar. However, and this was my first original interest when I got in an ATI, was are they interchangeable? Can you use original mags in a... Uh, ATI MP40, or more importantly, can you use the original MP40 mags in, I'm sorry, the ATI mags in an original MP40? Because these original mags are about $150 a piece, uh, whereas these is probably going to be a lot cheaper. So I did try that out, and unfortunately, no, they don't lock. Uh, this is, of course, too small, and this is going to be too large. It would have been really, really cool for them to have engineered the magazines to fit the exact same way. I'm sure that they could have done that. Um, you know, they probably didn't think 
that it would be a huge selling point because only people with real MP40s would be interested in that, which there aren't too many of running around. So that's probably, they, they found it logistically easier to make a proprietary magazine, which is what it is. Both of these magazines, however, are double column, single feed, which was a problem with the original MP40, uh, which led to magazine reliability issues, which means in the magazine, this is just like a Sten gun, the magazines are going to double stack, but at the top they will single feed, so they will file into one single feeding position here at the top, which is not the most reliable. The Sten gun was the same way, like I mentioned. The Thompson submachine gun, of course, was a double stack double feed, just like you would see in a modern AR-15 or an AK-47, where the rounds stagger and they feed from left to right, left to right, as the rounds are, are uh, pushed up in the magazine ready for feeding. So let's go ahead and talk about the barrels. We know that they're about the same length. Now some of the differences that I've noticed, let's start up here with the barrel nut. They both have a threaded barrel nut, so you can push in a little uh, stud and spin the barrel nut off, re revealing threads. Uh, there is some speculation as to why originally the Germans wanted to have a threaded barrel. Uh, the most plausible and most common explanation I can find is uh, in order to suppress them. So, uh, of course, there have been some playing with putting suppressors on these, per the limited research I've looked at. Uh, in the ATI version, we have the same thing. It is a threaded muzzle protector. The stylizing of the two is a little bit different, and I will bring in... There is the original MP40 threaded muzzle protector. And here is the ATI. Now the next thing I will talk about is the front sight base. It is a little bit different in design. On the original MP40 we will see the sight hood as perfectly round, so it's kind of a more round surface. And we do have just a front post here, and sorry if that's not focusing too well, a post up here at the front. Um, there is an opening on the side, on both sides of the sight base, uh, to allow to drift the front sight, which is dovetailed to make windage adjustments on the front side base. We look at the ATI, we do see these kind of flat edges, so not rounded like on an original. Also, the front sight is not drift adjustable and it does have a little uh, kind of a yellow dot. I don't know if that's a luminescent or a night sight, but a little bit of a modern feature, which of course we would not have found on an original. Also, those little windows are not there, so you cannot drift adjust the front sight, at least the same way you can on an original. The next thing we'll look at is this little bar here. This is a Bakelite bar on the bottom of the barrel. You also found them made out of aluminum. The reason that they made this is because if you were on the side of a half track or looking out a window or anything and you wanted to rest the barrel of the submachine gun on the side of the armor of a half track or a tank or anything else, it was to preserve and not damage the barrel. As this piece would get damaged or broken, this little pin, could be drifted out in this bottom piece. This cheap Bakelite could be removed and then replaced. So that was to spare the barrel from any type of damage. Now the ATI has a similar look, but this is not a separate piece. It's all machined as one piece into the barrel. And this is just a little fake cross pin to uh, kind of complete the appearance. So this is actually a just a fake detail to make it look more authentic, but is really not functional like it is on an original. Again, it's just a cost-saving measure, most likely taken by ATI. Um, they don't expect people who are buying these to really worry about needing to replace those, as you're probably not going to be resting this on the side of a half-track or something. Uh, these, you know, to be honest, are going to be replicas or weekend plinkers for most people. Now, getting into the magazine well of each, we will start up here with an original. So, how this was done is you had a tube that was created, and then this well here, and you'll see there's a little bit of wiggle to it and these clamps. This is actually, the magazine well is a separate piece which was basically just formed and pressed around the tube and then pinned in place just to keep it here. And like I said, this one has a little bit of wiggle to it. If we go back to the ATI, the magazine well and the receiver are just one single machined piece. So uh, this is just one solid piece. There is no movement. It is not pinned in place. And you, if you just look closely in here, there are no creases between these parts, it's just all one solid piece. Um, in my opinion, actually, uh, a better design. It's gonna be uh, more rugged. You don't get that magazine wobble, and of course with magazine well wobble, uh, you could uh, create feeding issues as that tends to move, especially because this is where you're putting your hand, your supporting hand when you're firing. So if you're moving that at all, could create magazine, or uh, I'm sorry, feeding issues. So 
that's nice. And the reason that the reason that originally Germany probably did not decide to do that is because the firearms were stamped anyway, and then this is machined. Um, another thing too is uh, it would be easier to produce these as stampings and then just clamp them on with pins as opposed to machining a solid piece. So this was done for wartime. Uh, basically just to keep things quick and simple. This is obviously just a commercial production gun, uh, so that is an advantage. Some other things we will notice, of course, is the GSG roll markings, and then if I switch it to this side, we have all those markings there as well. You also find the back side of the magazine release lever here, uh, which if we look at the original, of course there are no markings there and we do see the back of the magazine release lever on the original one as well. Uh, coming back into the receiver, let's start with the charging handle. So the charging handles are a little bit different. The charging handle slot or port runs pretty much the entire length of the receiver tube, which here on the ATI, it does not. It runs about half the length. So on the original, it would travel the bolt. Um, handle would be here because the bolt handle is actually positioned towards the rear of the bolt. Now we have not taken this apart yet and we will compare the internals and take down on all of that in just a second. Also the takedown handle is very different in, in basically design. It just looks very different. Um, here on the original uh, it's flatter and it did have a safety feature where you could push that in and it locks the bolt in place which we do not have here on the ATI. The reason I have a rubber band there is because there is a retaining pin that keeps the bolt handle attached to the bolt stud. Um, and this one is a little bit loose, it's fine, but when it fires, that can kind of start jarring itself loose, so I just put that on there. Um, which again is a common issue with these MP40s. One cool feature here too is the other safety feature on an original MP40 is when the bolt is back, and so it is an open bolt machine gun. If you want to know more about the operation of an MP40, go check out my other video on the MP40, which I'll put a link to. But this is in the open bolt position, so in this position, it's ready to fire which is also similarly the location of the bolt in this one, the ATI, which is a closed bolt, of course. Uh, you cannot have any open bolt weapon that's a semi-automatic per ATF regulations. So even if it's a semi-automatic, it's not allowed to be open bolt. The MP40 does not have a safety lever, so to put it on safe, there's actually a safety notch here, so I can pull to the rear and then get it up in that notch, and that's the safety. The ATI has a similar safety feature, so I can pull the bolt to the rear and then go up and lock it, and then that's it, safety notch. So it functions actually just like an MP40. Now with the ATI, we did mention that this is a closed bolt uh, firearm, but with the mag inserted, the magazine does have a last round to hold open. So the magazine inserted, I can pull the bolt to the rear and without trying to get it in that safety notch. And as you'll see, the bolt is kind of locked in the rearward position because the magazine is empty. So it kind of simulates an open bolt machine gun. If I push and remove the magazine, the bolt stays locked to the rear. But if I pull and then let go, it'll go back to the forward position. Now, the lower on an original is kind of a Bakelite plastic. Um, it basically has these panels that are Bakelite, which is a very common plastic that was used in military firearms during World War II. This is also a plastic lower, but this is just more of a standard, uh, a very cheap type plastic. Does not feel nearly, nearly as durable or the same as Bakelite. Bakelite is just a very, very tough, hard plastic, almost like the polymer of its days. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the difference in field stripping. Now, on an original, and we'll get to this, the takedown knob is actually here. On this example, on the ATI, this is actually your safety. So we will see S for safe, F for fire. So turn it in any one of those directions to put the gun on safe or to fire. But on an original, like I said, this is what you would use to take the, the machine gun apart. Uh, it is a different process on an ATI, which I'll go ahead and show you now. So the, for the disassembly of the ATI, you will need some sort of a mallet or a hammer, a punch, and something like a, a knife or a screwdriver. Uh, starting with this, and I'll show you the purpose of this, we'll go ahead and flip the firearm over. Now I'm going to pull the charging handle to the rear and then the upward position to give me, it'll cause the, uh, the firearm to kind of stand up a little bit on its side to give me some clearance behind it and I'll tell you why in a minute. But there is a cross pin located right here and I'll bring this in for you. 
So the cross pin is right here and it has that little collet or a little collar on it. And that's what I'm gonna use the screwdriver for to kind of pry that loose. Anyway, I know this is facing me, but I'll go ahead and knock that little clamp off. Find a good way to do this without scratching the gun. So I got that knocked loose. So I will set that aside and be sure not to lose it. Now we need to drift that pin out. And that's why I have it with the charging handle up like that so that it stands up a little bit so it's not meeting flush with the table on the other side. So I will grab a punch and go ahead and set it on there and my mallet. And go ahead and drift that out. So I can then grab still a little bit tight so I will just continue to force it the rest of the way. Now the two halves are under spring tension, that's the recoil spring. So when I remove that punch out, it will allow the two pieces to kind of fall apart. Now the reason it didn't come out completely is that the bolt lock is still engaged. So I will go ahead and drop that. And then separate the two pieces. Now I have the lower here. This is your buffer here for the spring. Then a recoil spring here. Then I can go ahead and grab the bolt handle and pull the bolt towards the rear. Go ahead and pull that bolt handle out. Just like how like a Sten submachine gun would work. And then I can pull the bolt out the rear. So that is it field stripped. Like I said, it does require tools. Now I will show you the very big difference in the two by disassembling the original. You'll see how much easier it is. Uh, no tool is required and then we'll kind of compare all the parts. So here I have an original MP40 and uh, like we talked about the little knob down here on the bottom on the ATI is a safety. On the MP40 it's actually your disassembly knob. So this will be a lot easier to show you facing you. Because all I'm going to do is grab that knob, pull out and then turn about a quarter turn. And that right there is going to separate or unlock the two halves from one another. I'll go ahead and pull the trigger dropping the sear and then I will just turn the upper receiver off the lower receiver so that is the two parts separated go ahead and start extracting the bolt now this is my recoil spring assembly it's actually a telescoping recoil spring then I can grab my bolt handle and just pull it out the rear now because the slot here for the charging handle travels the entire length of the tube I don't have to pull out the charging handle it just freely slides out the back now another question I know I'm probably going to get are is are the uppers and lowers compatible? Can I take the upper receiver of the ATI and put it on the lower receiver of the uh, German MP40? And um, no, it's not going to be compatible. There's a lot of differences in how they function. I'm not even going to try because if I were to successfully mate these two, then I have created an illegal SBR because this has a stock on it and this is not a registered SBR. But anyway, they will not work. Um, you might be able to kind of do it about that much just to kind of see it looks a little weird, but they don't even begin to match with each other. Um, starting with the lowers, and this is where we're going to have the biggest difference between the two, is this is an open bolt submachine gun, which means there is a sear arm here. So as I pull the trigger, that moves. It's actually when it's in the upward position now, that's what's holding the bolt to the rear, an open bolt submachine gun. When I pull the trigger, all I'm doing is dropping that out of the way, allowing the spring to push the bolt forward and fire. And as long as I'm holding that trigger, the bolt will freely reciprocate firing the machine gun. So a semi-automatic such as this, this is the lower receiver on the ATI, is hammer fired. So here as I pull the trigger, we see a trigger arm or a trigger bar there, which is not going to do anything now because the two pieces are not conjoined. But that, of course, this is your hammer will fire and reset itself every single time. And then it'll be held on a sear to ensure that it fires in a single automatic and not fully automatic. So the way these two function are completely different. So it looks like an MP40, but functionally it's very, very different. On the upper receiver as well, this is the ATI. We see a big cut out there to allow that hammer to strike the back of the bolt. And it's very flat, of course, here. And on an original MP40, we just have this notch here for the sear and this notch here to lock the firearm to the uh, to the lower. Now, of course, the recoil systems are very different as well. This is from the ATI. It is a traditional spring and a buffer here. And on an original MP40, this is actually the recoil spring system. It is a telescoping tube that it's like a pneumatic buffer tube that does that. And then pinned up here to the front is actually your firing pin. So if we take the bolt, 
it would actually sit inside the receiver like this and as the receiver, the bolt goes into recoil, the front of the firing pin protrudes through the front there. Here is the bolt from the ATI. Of course, this is a guide for the recoil spring in the rear. And this clearance here is to allow for the hammer to hit the back of the firing pin, which is right here. Again, very indicative of what you'll see on a closed bolt semi-automatic weapon. Well, that's all the time we have for you today on these. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please let me know by hitting that like button or leaving a comment down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see others like it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Again, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.